Hello and welcome to this webinar on small group techniques and tactics out of possession in futsal and football. What we mean by small groups here is kind of twos and threes. Uh, we did the in possession webinars and we looked at pairs specifically, but I think the context of a third player is, is going to be really important when talking about some of the content on this one. So it might be relevant for working as a pair, but I think some is working in threes as well. Uh, you probably know us by now uh, if you've been watching this series, but my name is Ian Parks, uh, YCD with responsibility for futsal. We've got Mike Scoobala, Scoobs, England futsal head coach, Hi. and Cara, Graham Carrick, YCD. You all right, guys? Hello. You all right? So conscious some people might be watching this fresh for the first time this is the second in a short series on out of possession webinars so if you haven't seen the first one on defending as an individual then please feel free to go and have a look at that and we've also done a similar series on in possession so look out for these if this is your first experience of this type of webinar um, but today we're going to follow a similar pattern to the other webinars um, we'll look at three important small group techniques and tactics from a futsal perspective and then follow with some football clips to see what it looks like in football. Uh, we all, always use this as a point of reference just to show that now we're at that second part up of the pyramid on the left looking at twos and threes. I say we've talked about individuals already. Um, if you want this pyramid explained please go and watch the other webinars because we've talked about it more on those. But I think it's fairly self-explanatory in terms of the importance of the fundamental at the bottom. And then when you're working with international players, you've probably got less time to do that, although it's still really important. So these are the, the three things we're going to look at today. Cover, very much uh, cover and balance, football terminology we're used to. Following and exchanging, really important in futsal, deciding whether to follow your player or whether to pass them on to someone else still relevant for football and this idea of jumping i think um the jump press has become uh, a known term but it's the idea of leaving a player um to go and get uh, onto another player so they're what we're going to talk about today starting with cover uh if this is the first one of these webinars you've you've watched we often we always have this perception and decision as a key factor and also being able to do things off both sides um, perception and decision being really important that um, you need to know what's going on around you in order to make good decisions about what position to take up or, or whether to engage, for example. Um, it, it links to the tactical element. We've called it techniques and tactics because we think linked to that tactical part, that's where understanding what's around you becomes really important. And the off both sides, again, need to be able to, to cover on, on both sides, whether you're covering a player on that side or that side. And all the footwork and the nuances of the physical bits that go with that, you've got to be able to do that off both sides, we believe, to be as, as good as you can, really. So let's look at this clip, um, futsal clip. Look at the positions that players take up in terms of their cover and, and whether or not they choose to engage. <clears throat> so we've actually used the same clip as we used for marking in a previous webinar. I think one of the one of the sort of references when you get into your twos and threes is about having a what we call a strong and weak side of defending the court. Um, it gives a frame of reference. And when we talked about the England DNA before, um, that's on all our documentation before. But it's really important that we we talk whether it's the two v two practice, the three v three practice, how you can defend well, you know, matched up or outnumbered, and ultimately with a strong weak or strong side and weak side. Uh, so then what do you mean by strong side and weak side so the side of the ball really now so so as the ball transfers over there that becomes you know that strong side and our player with the yellow boots is now on the weak side of the court so how can we flood if you like the strong side of the court so they can't play through as easily understanding that now this is the weak side so the players just tweaked off a little bit inside um you know Getting, getting stronger on the side of the ball effectively as the, the orientation of the game has gone to one side. So we're talking about cover, um, defensive lines. We're talking about pressure on the ball. Ultimately, you know, we're then getting into that stage around, well, how does that fit with tactical stuff of twos and threes? Um, so I suppose it's an example there, four trying to keep the 
it's body shape almost trying to keep it that side is it that is that what you're talking about in terms of strong yeah. side yeah no so the ball on the strong side or not so the ball's, no, the ball's on the strong side so that's the strong side of the court where the ball is so what we don't want to be 11 doesn't want to be really tight to 13 even if we're pressing because if five gets done we've got no cover and balance in what we do so four really is dropping in line with the with horizontally with the line of the ball to, to, to keep this court strong so we can't be played through um, so all of their positions at the minute is in relation to where the ball is and what pressure is on the ball and also the body shape of the, the 24 on the ball. Um, and again here, so, you know, as they look to combine, we need to make the court really strong um, on our side. And you talked about lines of lines of defence, I think was the terms you used. Yeah, you so, it, we, you know, with, with four players, we would have our defensive lines, if you like. So um, we don't want, we want three lines of defence all the time or four including the keeper so the top players is one line the second player is the, the cover and balance is another player defensive and then the ultimate line the fourth line so we don't want players also on the same line so it's all about you know when we start to work in twos and we start to work in threes defensively it's all about positioning within your cover and balance in terms of horizontally and vertically to get the maximum output in what we're doing really So that little sort of check back in here is to block the middle to make it harder for the keeper to play through as a game. So it's really subtle action. Even though we've got good pressure on the ball, might go back there. He's in the first line of defence. So he's just closing the middle, knowing that the ball might go back there, might go out. Um, but again, it's a subtle action really with what's going on. So this is our first line of defence as a two working in a pair. That's our second line of defender player coming out. But now the, that's the strong side. So our number 11 needs to go and cover and balance. So he's starting to work back in, leaving his player. And a defensive triangle, is that a term that I've heard you use before? Yeah, so when we're that's the individual action within the strong and weak side is the pressure on the ball, the goal, your goal of frame of reference, and then um, where your opposite player is. So Nathan here, he's in a defensive triangle, what good pressure on the ball, doesn't want to be outside in relation to his, you know, his own goal and can see his player. So good individual actions within a cover and balance is the defensive triangle, if you were to draw sort of lines over the top of players to recover the ball and get regains. Car, anything from you on cover? Um, a question for people to consider around, and it, it will be linked to context and situations, and I mean, and in sort of you as an individual. But if you're the first defender, the defender nearest the ball, how much cover do you need, and where do you need your cover? It's a bit of an open question for people. Um, if you're the if you're sort of second or third defender within the moment, if you like, um, where. How much and, and, and what do you need to cover as a priority? I think are, are decent questions when you're trying to uh, just to consider when, when you're trying to look at this stuff. Um, because is it the, the, and, and sometimes it comes down to preferences and people have different. So the principles of pressure, cover, balance in football have been around since the beginning of time. But the extent of what you if, if, of how you apply those principles, I think that's the interesting thing and the difference of opinion. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. And when when does your cover become more threatening of the passing line? Yeah, you know, that's really key. So what situation? And you 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 know I agree. It's one hundred percent situational. It's almost, how, it's almost a risk thing. It can feel like a risk. How much? How much? How uh, risky are you going to be? How yeah. close to the ball are you going to be in terms of the cover? Yeah. Or are you going to really sort of really cover and leave space ahead of you, or are you going to? And it links to the strategy, but it also just links to you as an individual and what you can cope with and what your teammate can cope with as an individual. Yeah. And if there's, and you know, we always talk about if there's good pressure on the ball, then you should be able to go and threaten passing lines a bit more. Um, and again, that comes back, drops back down into the individual recognition before phase on your cover. You've got to read the game. You've got to be able to read the pressure on the ball. You've got to be able to read the foot of the player that's on the ball to know how much of a threat they are. So even on that little pass in between you, is it so the their their deep play, I think it might be in the 16s, managed to find that little forward pass. 
And is that to do with the lack of the lack of pressure on the ball by the eleven or the the England five position? Could he have cut that passing line off a little bit more um, and almost offered more cover as as the, um, as it goes back across? Yeah. So does the so the sixteen finds a four pass? Is that to do with the eleven or could the five cover almost um, stay more central to to really cut that passing line off? Um, or is it a problem now? So there's different ways to defend the same moment depending on your preferences. I think that's what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. But on that one, the more the five is inside, the more space and time it gives his them. direct opponent would have. Yeah, and so it's but it's going to affect. He's got to be looking at the the pressure on the ball. I think we've talked about a lot of the body shape of eleven. So actually, eleven's trying to show them wide by the looks of things, but almost so flat that it, it opens it up straight so um yeah i think we've got another video on cover and we'll be looking at the white 14 how they cover from this situation again difficult off camera apologies it's the, the television footage yeah so i think that's a great example you know quick example of being really strong and your defensive cover so being on the strong side of the court so ultimately i think it was like you said, the white 14 is really inside the game and effectively is half the court. So trying to get them to play in half a court means if they're trying to, you know, build something, it's it's going to be difficult, but ultimately leaving the space on the weak side. So if they get out in this situation, you know, you can get out to sort of get pressure on from a defensive positioning yeah. on the second line. So good example for me around, you know, strong side and weak side. And also the number 18s. Sort of covering the first line is important within that, so that there is some pressure, some sort of secondary pressure that comes after after that their player dribbles past his direct opponent. Although the eighteen isn't directly involved in him giving it away, he sort of is because he again cuts down the just as he comes inside. So just that cover position closes that space a little yeah. bit now. Yeah, threatens the passing line. It sort of closes the passing line. Yeah. Even where it stopped, so here the cover of the whites, they're all that side, aren't they? The four at the back is covering right across, 11 covering right across. But this one here, the 18, is this one you were talking about? Just steps just inside here. Has the ball here, the 10, and he looks to open up strong, strong on the passing line here. So it doesn't duck down well actually keeps keeps the threat okay and one more i think for cover you might have been watching different clips there i think this is just to show the importance of the goalkeeper yeah just a real short clip to say that really important in futsal especially if you're pressing high that the goalkeeper yeah. can provide cover yeah, I think it's really important in football and football. So you know that we leave, we make sure that the keeper is attached to our our plan and our strategy. So if we're pressing high here, then it's great for young players to understand that you know we can press high. Then the space might need to be dominated by the keeper in your fourth line in our game. But you know, I think it's you know the same in football. The keeper needs to be attached to the pressing front to back. Um, and if they're not, this player probably would have got in. Well, not this one because not, but players would get in. stuff watch it once more and then we'll move on and again they need to be able to read the pressure on the on the ball as well so everyone needs to read those triggers and the anti be anticipating what's coming over the top good stuff so here's a, a summary of some of the things we talked about maybe some things we didn't um, just that idea of engaging as well we talked on the last webinar about a before during and after of individual actions and i think the um the importance of pressing and a lot of the things that we then talked about on the previous one is the detail of going and pressing the ball as an individual that's just stuff you can revisit you can look at it depends what lens you're looking at it through really and i think just i think scoops mentioned one and a half jobs i think was the term you used um i think in cover it's, it, it's like it's one of the real fundamental ideas that you understand that um that will give you the chance to cover well yeah, and I think in, this is in games, you know, where you see in football games and, and futsal games where defenders, it looks effortless. 
and it looks like they're not moving. But actually, what they're really good at, they're reading the triggers of, of the game quicker than anybody else, and they can really sort out the mess if they want to doing a job and a half better than anyone else. And you, and you know, either wow, they're great defenders. But actually, what they're really good at is recognizing. Um, dangerous space and knowing whether what to cover at what certain points. Okay. So following the exchanging, uh, key part of defending in futsal, typically there are two choices really when you're marking someone, you either follow them or you pass them on to someone else. So I think we're going to have a look here at, at why you might do either of these things and, and what's involved if you do choose to do either of these things. So one clip, I think. Lots going on in the clip. Sometimes they're following, sometimes they're exchanging. Scoob's probably a good one for you to talk us through why they might be choosing to to follow or exchange, depending on a number of things, I imagine, where they are on the court, what's going on. Yeah, you know, we've got sort of man for man, man for man with exchanges, like you're saying, and zonal, um, three types of defending as, you know, the group and individuals. But depending on the strategies, depending on, what line they're on would dictate whether they follow, whether they exchange, depending on coaching philosophy. Um, but ultimately, you know, they need to have all these tools in their toolbox to be good players, whether they play for an international team, another club team, they need to be adaptable. And also context of the pitch, context of the court, where we would do it. So, you know, just we have a sort of way of doing things where we, we, we're man for man, but we try and exchange on the first line, for example, to keep the pressure high, keep the pressure on the ball. Um, but if they, on the second and third line, or if we're in a mid block and someone travels across us, we'll probably go with it. So like as a corner run, we'd probably go with. Um, but on the weak side of the court, we might exchange, for example. So, you know, all of these decisions allow you to keep good, strong pressure on the ball. Um, so sometimes it's better to exchange and keep high pressure. Sometimes it's better to be man for man and keep pressure. Um, sometimes you want to go zonal and, you know, don't follow players in any way, really. So so a couple of examples there of players passing on and here. Will so Rowe, number 15, looking yeah, so, at passing players on and, and picking yeah. up the next one. So that's a, that's a good example, if I just draw it back to that example for you, that that's a good example of exchanging um, for us on the first line because... He's having a look there of, as the ball goes across, his player, he's had a look at number 10. He's seen his player. And there's probably a communication with the other defensive player. And they're now on the weak side defensively. So it's a good opportunity to exchange, to keep pressure on. Because if he was to go to 13, we lose court height. Um, so here, Will Rook's trying to exchange. So there, there's an exchange of players. He needs to see the 10. They need to exchange, you know, vertically here and the player behind needs to take the 13. So all of a sudden here, you keep the strength in the, the first line. Um, so a, a good example there, Park, so yeah, of, of exchanging to keep pressure on. And now we've got that pressure on the ball. And there you said about a player running across somebody. So seven there, the red seven has gone with the two. Yeah, red has gone to, well, now you, some coaches would say that's not right because of the orientation of the game, for example. So he could have jumped. So in a weird kind of way, we might have gone with in, you know, in defensive ways. And it's really important to understand that you might make defensive errors when you're pressing and exchanging, but you don't necessarily see them because it doesn't affect you. Um, but so he's gone with him because it's a corner run, but could have jumped. But we've managed to keep the pressure on the game and build the pressure. Um, again, here, so the Doug Reed in the middle here is going across with a corner run. Um, so following to make sure that you can get that 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 balance on and keep it strong. So lots of lots going on really when you start to talk about marking, exchanging. I think quickly on the on the football sort of transfer, if you like, um, it does often really link to the team strategy around how we on or how man to man um, you're going to play. Um, so that that. And, the, and just understand the trade-offs of that. So as um, Scoob said, obviously, you can have an impact on territory if you've got man-to-man, -man, if you follow your man deep towards your own goal. Um, it can really drag you individually and the team back. One of the challenges is around, if you think, tactically football. If if a player plays, if your direct opponent plays off, off their shape, 
So what I mean by that, if it's like a false nine who goes deep by and you're a centre back. It's um, do you follow on how far do you follow if you do? The same for full back, it may be against a winger. If a winger likes to drift inside off the shape and off the light into the pitch, how far do you go? Um, before exchanging, before passing on, or same with like a full back, a winger, we're defending. If when do you exchange or some coaches will have again different views on on that but the key bit is about the time of it, the communication of it um and it does often link with the wider team strategy and on, on this yeah i think it's really clear about your teaching methodology around this as well so being clear around what methodology you use for your players in terms of what you want them to do um, and don't be too complicated with it and give that clear simplicity of message because in the heat of battle there's loads going on and when you want to take your team or your group to the next level methodology of and, and pictures are really really important good i think we covered some of these things again i'll go back to that individual where it says they're tracking an individual marking that's just some of the stuff we've talked about previously that idea of following through but covering the middle so you might not cover exactly with them you might go yeah. through with them but keep you're keeping in the middle of the court as they travel through, um, keeping them in front of you where possible, trying not, not to get, and get behind. Um, and this idea of dependent on movement and visual was kind of what you were saying, Scoobs, around it might be dependent on them whether they run across you or behind you. Some coaches might say that, or it might be dependent on I'm checking. If I see someone coming back round, well, then I'm ready to exchange. But if I check and yeah. there's no one coming back round, I've got to go with them. Yeah, there's lots of different things that go into it and lots of different coaching philosophies. I've just given you one idea, but, you know, as you start to work in twos, these things start to come become important with the cover and balance and, you know, covering the middle, I, I call it um, stay inside the game. So if the game's going around you, you know, around and not through, I think football would call it, but I say stay inside the game. If you're inside the game, you can make decisions that wouldn't hurt you as much, you know, things like that, really, so... Good stuff. I, and I think uh, okay. I think it's good to talk about the strong side, weak side before, and also how close to your goal or, or what unit in football have a big impact on that. So often centre backs um, really don't like to cross in football, even regardless. Often even playing man to man as a team and pressing high, the centre backs don't like to cross. Or, or backline players don't like to cross each other. Um, so then you get into the almost into some of that where actually it's, it's less um, more likely that there's an um units further up the pitch might be more flexible or cross or all that but even then players don't like to cross laterally so yeah. just yeah just some of those considerations really about um but fundamentally for young players it would just be about the communication and when and, and why you would exchange is um it takes a lot of learning and it's really not easy to do in the moment when the ball's moving your opponents are moving um so again don't expect too much from your players around this too young i would say um but you can introduce some bits of it good stuff and uh, we're now going to look at some clips of jumping and this idea of leaving your player to jump onto another player I think this probably, you know, this is starting to get on some more sophisticated sort of things going on in the game. And, you know, you could we could spend a day talking about jumping alone and ways to do it. So it's just, you know, obviously just touching on defensive jumps. You know, I, I have a way of, of doing it. Other coaches have a, a different way of doing it, you know, and I have triggers that I like them to see in order to take a jump. Uh, so I like jumping in lanes one and four because it's closer to the, the lanes. Um, so for those that haven't come across that yeah. they might not have seen something lane one and four being the wide lanes two and three yeah. being the middle that's it yeah um things like negative passes a short pass so if you look at this it's not a negative pass but it's a short pass so uh stuart cook here is following mm. the orientation of the game so if i you know go through the player with the yellow boots stuart cook yeah so we've got good pressure on the ball um coming through and jumping effectively means leaving your player to go and get secondary player on the ball or leaving your player to go and get more pressure on the ball so you're jumping off your defense so I think, I think, 
Yeah, as, as Scoob says there, the idea of jumping is to sort of leave your player to, to jump on to put pressure on with on a different player, probably in a, in a, a line further up the pitch towards your opponent's goal. I think just the 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 reasons for that is one, probably to get pressure on the ball or make either keep or get pressure on the ball in a higher line. And part of that is around either maintaining or, or um, gaining more numbers around the ball and, and uh, keeping by doing that, keeping pressure right on the ball. Um, so um, the interesting thing with that, again, if you do in isolation, it, it, if one player jumps and their man becomes spare, so who's then going to deal with that player? There's some of the considerations, some of the key considerations when players jump from their man. So not yeah. just what they do, but the implications for the the team scoops mentioned quite a few i think distance is another one if cookie's quite close play with the yellow boots is quite close then it's easier to it's less risky isn't it like you say cara to then it gives the player less time to get out of trouble and give it back to the player he's just left and you'd come down the passing line of the player you've just left as well really important i think in football we tend to separate jumping being a bit more of a thing where you go and doubling up is a one way and you see in wide areas where um you might join your team your teammates already there and you leave your pl- so the ball might be with a winger and you, you leave your if, if you're a midfielder, you leave your direct opponent to double up. So that's that's a common term in football. And we jumping is more around going into a higher line. So I'm midfielder yeah. and I press their back line, um, for example. Yeah, jumping up. I would um and also you're gonna see uh, something there now, I think, linked yeah, to really, that. For me, it's really contextual as well in this situation and the scenario. So, you know, would you do it on your, your last line of defence? Maybe not. Would you do it on your first line of defence? Probably. You know, and it's, for me, the context is really important. OK, I think there's just a, a quick example here of that idea, maybe what you're talking about, Cara jumping up or ahead or higher. Again, it's really short distances. Yeah, short distance. As the keeper takes a touch inside, that's effectively the trigger to jump. Um, if the keeper would have not touched a touch inside, you know, he would have had a pass out with his the player on the ball. So again, you know, there is still triggers to teach and why you would do it and when you would do it. And often a straight pass back. Yeah. So because the defender's facing forwards, you can almost continue his run to yeah. get pressure. So there's little details within it, as Mike said before, could be on all day talking about it really but I, I actually think um, sorry to cut across I, know, I actually think it's a really good thing to just drop in with kids because in possession it really starts to put players under different pressures because it come the pressure's coming from different places so I think it needs to be directional I think it needs to be in a game but the really good thing about it is I think you'll get it wrong a lot jumping but I also think it'll, when you get it right players get put under extreme pressure that's not so manufactured if you know what I mean so I think it's a really good way of you know getting kids on the ball to be better as well in terms of maybe creativity and getting out of tight situations yeah good and kids love to chase depending on their age don't they the young yeah. ones they love to go yeah. chase the ball and, yeah. and why not use that as a way of you know exploring jumping using the like you say the, the following well actually why don't teach them the why to do it and when to do it and let them go a bit with it in the foundation phase maybe yeah good some notes there for people to consider okay we've got uh, the, the same three football clips that we watched on the last webinar just to bring this back covering following and exchanging if there's anything relevant there and then the idea of jumping leaving your player to go to another I think just watch out for Salah on this. What is it particularly you're looking for? Just in terms of um, to try and get pressure on the goalkeeper on the f- earlier. There's an example there of Salah of you talked earlier about how how much you want to risk the cover. So there he almost chose not to cover because he could because it was a high line. He could risk staying a bit higher. Liverpool do it a lot, um, generally, and, and, and in this in this clip specifically around jumping. Yeah, 
there's difference, you know, like vertical. Like I think you you know jumping forward like a vertical jump. Uh, Salah yeah. you know horizontal jump, but then players are still jumping vertically into the next line to get pressure on. So no, stops it forwards. Jump into press here. It's more. It, it looks sometimes it looks disorganised, but it's actually very organised in terms of the trigger and cues, which are in the why they're doing it. And then the, the other thing at the next level is the reorganisation under the jump. Yeah. Good. I think we've got the next one coming. Still looking at cover, following exchange as well. There's a covering position there just to win the ball back. Yeah, I think balance in terms of team balance is important with this. As as Mike said before, but whether you jump or whether just back to getting trying to get pressure on the ball and offering cover around what's the, what's the balance, what's the situation. So Farrell Williams here, who's in win number four, as we said before, she sort sort of she knows there's a player behind, um, and they really want to keep the player down this this side. Um, often numbers comes into it of how many players have you got and whether if you've got a spare player to use it to cover you've got more obvious cover so in this example the passing you've it's a nice cover position from the from the deeper player here yeah but um she hasn't got a direct opponent which makes that easier so that's mm -hmm. where the tactics can come into to play really understanding the principles and the balance of players what's happening behind the ball to then allow the players near the ball to get either to either get more pressure on the ball generally or to jump to get more pressure um, or whether they need to exchange or it all comes in the context and the passing on players you were talking about earlier in a football context i think comes in here where there's a bit more of a zone Yeah, and obviously the offside can change the space a little bit as well around helping to um, get pressure on the ball or when to jump. So he passes him on there because he's got players behind him. And little things, because Wolves play with a back five, if you like, there's often a spare player. It depends on the situation, on the systems, but... Um, Typically, you might just give you the chance to, to pass on more easily because there's a player, there's a chance there might be a spare central defender yeah. or two. Picture before Lingard comes in, we've got two spare central defenders that you can pass on to. The, so I think never is there's let Lingard go because I think it's, it's a volley, the left centre back can then take Lingard. So some of the stuff away from the ball is, um, is really important. When we're talking about this as well as the more direct sort of focus on the ball but all oh, the cover here is really important isn't it like yeah. blocking passing lines is it midfielder there the central of the three yeah filling across to cover yeah block passing lines to center forwards here you can see just steps across to block that one maybe that's one like you said carrie should have let it go and then intercepted but and again the right so side in this side as well Number so if you talk about strong and weak side, you know, look how strong right they are on one side of the ball, you know, making one side really strong. Uh, yeah. Lots of numbers in a sort of zone or um, passing players on because they can. Tuck him right across. Excellent. Well, that brings this one to a close. Again, hopefully people have taken something from that. Um, I know, Carrie, you asked some some questions of people and, and hopefully they'll ask questions of each other watching it to, to try and challenge their thinking on some of the stuff we've discussed. But thanks ever so much for your time as always. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Ta -ra.